It was past midnight and the third Jama had begun when the great Pavitaraya finally returned to his mansion. The storm within him stirred up more dust than the upper wind that swirled and whipped up the street dust. Aramuch felt a little sorry for having to scold his brother to such an extent. His younger brother's admiration for him was limitless. He said something because of that admiration. But the skeptic, why complain unnecessarily about Nandini? Human nature seems to be like that. It is the nature of ordinary people to try to escape by blaming others for their mistakes. But why should he adopt such a disgraceful method? That sly thief, who was caught in the clutches, left the youth, and for that on a woman, is it good for his bravery and manliness to blame Madani? Let it go. Is that why he repented and asked for forgiveness? And why should we even think about it? However, could there be an iota of truth in what he said? Maybe we have a girl crush on this old man? Shouldn't we have to rebuke our own brother, who has fought by our side in a hundred battlefields, who has repeatedly risked his own life and saved us from danger, for a girl who was captured from somewhere in the forest? So what did she raise? We do not know her origin. Her actions and speech are sometimes questionable. See you. Brother's word has caused such confusion in our hearts. What is unfair? How does she have living love for us? How disrespectful is she? How enthusiastic is she in all our affairs? Sometimes you even give us ideas and help us? You dared to marry this sixty-year-old man, don't you want to see it? If you bless that Sundari, who is envied by the Mother of God, will even Devendra run away from heaven? Who in this world would not want to marry her? Cow! Is it enough that she is caught in the eye of this beautiful Chola? How stupid is it to have any doubts about such a thing? We have heard that old men who marry young women will have all sorts of doubts and make their lives hell. We see such examples in worldly life. Shall we allow ourselves to be laughed at by such people? However, it is necessary to hear some details from her mouth. You often ask for a signet ring and buy it, why? You often go and sit alone in the Lada Hall, why? We hear that some magician visits her often, she herself admits, and what is it for? What is she going to ask the magician? Whom should she cast a spell on? In spite of all this, how long is she going to keep me as a married celibate? She is saying that something is fast and fasting, but she is asking to explain what fast and what is fasting. No. Is it like the trickster women in the stories used to manipulate? Don't give it any more space. When the Palavatarayar arrived at the door of his mansion, the palace pendi, servants and nurses were waiting to welcome him. But his eyes darted round and round but did not see the maiden whom he desired to see. On inquiry, it was found that Lada was still in the hall. He thought to himself, what is she doing there even after midnight? With the question, doubts and anger arose as to whether he was being neglected. With a bit of anger he headed towards the flag hall. When he reached the gate of the flag hall, he saw Nandini and her friend coming in front. When she saw him, she stopped and, without looking at him, began to look at the darkness that was dwelling in the garden. The nurse stood a little further away. Even after Palyavatarayar came close to Nandini, she did not look back at him. Instead of bringing Nandini thinking that he can scold her, he had to try to calm her anger. Nandini! My eyes! What is the anger? Why the indifference? He asked and placed his iron hand gently on her shoulder. Nandini also nudged his Vajrayuda hand with her tender palm. Mama! Is softness and suppleness so powerful? My life! You touched me with your silken hand and pushed me away, that is my fortune. You did what no warrior from the Trigana mountain to the Vindhya mountain could do. That is my fortune. But why should I say anger? My ears yearn to hear your honey-sweet voice. Are you suffering? begged that great warrior who had won in a thousand battlefields. How long has it been since you parted from me? Isn't it exactly four days? Nandini's voice sounded tingly when she said that. It melted the heart of the unrelenting reaper like wax put in heat. Is this why you are so angry? 
Can't you bear a four-day separation? What will you do if I have to go to the battlefield? To be separated for months. Said. Did you think that if they go to the battlefield, I will be separated from them for months? Change that thought. I will continue to come to the battlefield like their shadow. Beautiful. If I take you to the battlefield, it will be as if I have fought a war. I. These chest and shoulders have borne so many sharp arrows and vine ends. The world praises me as having sixty-four such wounds. But if a single thorn is sown into your smooth flowery mane, my chest will burst open. What many swords and shafts cannot do against me, the little needle that sews in your foot will accomplish. How shall I bring you to the battlefield? It pains me that you have stood so long on the black stone ground. Come like this. Come and sit on your flower bed. I will see your face. Four days division for you. Don't think it was only painful. Every moment of not seeing you was an age for me. I see your golden face. He took Nandini by the arm and made her sit on the couch. Nandini wiped her eyes and looked up at Palyavetarayar. In the golden light of the golden lamp, the officer saw the pearly rosy bloom on her face. Aha! Can you give all three worlds for this smile? As the three worlds are not at our disposal, we can adopt our body, material, and spirit for her. But she does not ask anything from us. This is how the warrior thought. The intention of questioning and scolding her is gone. Nandini has come to the situation of managing the work done by her feet with her head. Any form of slavery is evil. But nothing degrades a person like misogyny. You've been away for four days? Why didn't you come here as soon as you got back? Your brother is more important to them than me. Asked Nandini. After listening, she looked at him with fake anger. Not so, my eye. My heart longed to come to you like a bow from a bow. But I had to tarry at my brother's house to find out whether that impudent child Mad Hurandha came safely back through the tunnel. Sir. I have difficulty in all the things you have undertaken. I also wish that all your endeavors should succeed. But it is difficult for me to think that you are carrying a male child on the mud palak that I have to climb. All the people in the country towns think that they will also take me wherever they go. Do you think it pleases me alone? No. But the thing undertaken is a great thing. I endure to accomplish it. And have you forgotten that it was you who suggested the idea? You yourself told Madhurantha to take you in your Mudubalak? You sent him alone through the tunnels, both when leaving and coming from the fort. You told the strategy yourself. I did my duty. Isn't it the wife's duty to help her husband in the work he has done? I told him a trick I knew. So for them. Are you such a magical thing? Why do you call another magician? People needlessly talk about it. Looking at me in the midst of a hundred women, he said, when the old man was about to die, the woman became infatuated and lost his wits, dash where has your wisdom gone? Why did you marry that old man? Can I forget it, you asked? Shining like the heavenly Mahini. Which royal prince will love you and make you a garland? Go and go and get married to that old buffalo cow. Can you forget what she asked me? said Nandini Vimi and started crying. The tears welling up in her eyes trickled down her cheeks and soaked her breast. Can I forget it? Shining like the heavenly Mahini. Which royal prince will love you and make you a garland? Go and go and get married to that old buffalo cow. Can you forget what she asked me? said Nandini Vimi and started crying. The tears welling up in her eyes trickled down her cheeks and soaked her breast. Can I forget it? Shining like the heavenly Mahini. Which royal prince will love you and make you a garland? Go and go and get married to that old buffalo cow. Can you forget what she asked me? Said Nandini Vimi and started crying. The tears welling up in her eyes trickled down her cheeks and soaked her breast. <laughs>